so Flexbox, um, we just click that. So basically, Flexbox allows you to uh, do really powerful things in, in a really small amount of code uh, that's really quite powerful. For example, that button I just pushed just reordered uh, all the elements in there without actually changing the DOM structure. All I did was change a class, and Flexbox allows you to do that. Um, yeah, so my name's Ryan Seddon. Um, you can find me on the internet at Ryan Seddon on most sites um, if you want to find out more about me. Um, so yeah, back in the early days, CSS used to be uh, a really tough thing to do. It wasn't really made for doing complex web applications and like, different layouts, and now we've got responsive. Uh, it was just made for documents. Uh, and you can see the classic box model uh, stab there where you've got content that overflows outside of a box. Um, and Flexbox will uh, make you happy about CSS again. Uh, so the name says it all. It's incredibly flexible uh, by its very nature. Uh, it's really good for layouts uh, in the fact that it can resize depending on the, the constraints it's got to work with. Uh, it makes hard, previously hard things that we had to do lots of hacks for uh, really easy. And we'll go into some demos in a second. Uh, and it's responsive by nature uh, in the name that it's flexible. Uh, it will work with the constraints it's got to work with. So if you load up a Flexbox container on mobile, it might stack all the uh, elements on a single column. If you're on a wider tablet, you might have uh, three columns across. Uh, and it does it all for you, so you don't need to have uh, crazy media queries or special breakpoints. Um, so if we look at a, a demo here, so basically what I've got here is I've just got a bunch of divs, uh, just with some default styles. And this is a natural behavior it's got. So uh, the display block, and they all uh, sit below each other. So if I change uh, the container of these items to be a Flexbox container, what happens there is uh, what it does is it goes, well, it's a Flexbox container, so every item in there is going to be squished onto one row, and it's going to cut it all down, So which isn't exactly useful. That's why we've got these other properties. So we've got Flex Wrap. So now we want to say uh, we want these to wrap over multiple lines. So as soon as I do that, now you can see uh, it will then size the box uh, to be uh, as wide as the content is. And then if it can't fit on that row, it will drop it down to another row uh, and so on. We've got flex direction. So by default, flex direction is rows. So that's just the uh, you know, left to right. You've got rows. Uh, you can change that to column, which will get us back to where we started like that, so you can flow, you can change the flow of the containers. Uh, we can also do cool things like row reverse. So basically, uh, it will actually just reverse the row. It won't reverse from the end. So you can get, um, if you're doing like a, a, a different language, like an Arabic or Hebrew website, you can do the right to left layout just with a simple property change um, without any complex um, CSS changes. And then we've got the shorthand here, flex flow, which, uh, so we did the two longhand properties, you can do flex flow, and that does the same thing. Now going into individual items, we've got uh, a couple properties here called flex grow, flex shrink, and flex bases. So flex grow uh, says uh, I want each item in there to take up uh, relative to the, the width it's got to work with, it takes up one unit. So if there's 50 pixels left on this first row, each item will uh, stretch an extra 10 pixels. So to explain that, I'll just do that. So now you can see they all evenly sit uh, on their column, and they spread to their, uh, their container. Uh, so now they, they fully spread out, and um, they'll chop off the next line. It'll fit as many on there as it can, depending on the, the content within uh, the, the items in there. Flex shrink is the opposite. This uh, says uh, of what how many units can it shrink when it's got less width to work with? Uh, to work with. So flex shrink is uh, less useful if you have wrap turned on, because if it's got no room, it'll just wrap to the next line. So if you're working with a single uh, row, then flex shrink, uh, you can have control of how, how much uh, it, it would shrink when it's got less space to work with. Uh, so if I undo that, actually nothing changes, because we're wrapping. Uh, and then flex basis. Flex basis is uh, min width. So you can say each item has to at least be 200 pixels. So if I do that now, you can see now we get a nice little grid going on there. Uh, so that's saying uh, each has to be 200 pixels. So now the first row, so that's 800 pixels wide. Uh, you might be able to fit four in there. If it's 700 pixels, it fits three, and then it stretches them out each by another 33 pixels each, because we've got that flex grow property. We're saying each one should take up one extra space. And then we've got the shorthand here for those three properties. This is just flex. 
And we'll see a little thing down the bottom here that the last, last item couldn't fit on the, the row there. So what it does is it drops down and expands to the full width. And you get a nice, easy, beautiful grid with just a few properties. Back. So before we get too excited, there are three implementations. So if anyone was in Andrew's talk this morning, he talked about performance issues with the original Flexbox uh, uh, specification, which uh, came around about 2009. Uh, that's no longer the case. So there's, there's three. There's Tweener, which is kind of in between circa uh, the, the 2009 specification and um, the current candidate recommendation, which most stable browsers, most evergreen browsers like Firefox and Chrome uh, and Safari implement. Tweener is uh, unfortunately shipped in IE 10. So you've got this in-between state of uh, Flexbox uh, support. To 2009 version, uh, there's very few browsers support it. If you have to support really old Firefox, you might hit that, but you wouldn't have to worry about any performance issues with the latest one. Uh, so that last demo CSS more looks like this with all the prefixes. Uh, just a, you know, you can handle this in a preprocessor or, or some sort of auto prefixing tool. Um, and you want to, if you want tweener, then you'll see the syntax is different again. So you've got instead of display flex, you've got display flex box. Instead of uh, flex uh, direction, you've got box orient. Um, so if you need to handle IE 10, then you'll need to handle that. So looking at browser support, it's pretty good. Uh, if you have to support older IEs, um, then I feel bad for you. <laughs> but as you can see, uh, pretty much every latest release browser has support for the latest um, uh, for the latest one I just showed in the previous demo. Uh, with the unfortunate thing, Firefox at the moment doesn't support Flex Wrap, so at the moment you can't do the wrapping, which is a bit crap. But I imagine they will be adding that very soon. So, pro tip, uh, you can use Modernizer. So Modernizer can detect for if you have no Flexbox support, if you have legacy flex, uh, Flexbox support, if you have the tweener, or if you have the current candidate recommendation, which is the stable release that most browsers implement. Uh, so use that to work out which version you're working with. Uh, like I said before, you should be using uh, a preprocessor like SAS, less, failing that. If you just want to write vanilla CSS, there's, tool, there's a tool called Auto Prefixer which will actually look up, can I use data to prefix that for you? So you can just write the latest spec, and then that will process your CSS, and it will output all the extra bits, so you don't have to worry about all those weird names. Because uh, manually writing it will, will kill you, in fact. Uh, so let's look at some real-world use cases. So this is, uh, this is one that's, uh, this is, uh, plagued us for many years, is to be able to do horizontal and vertical centering. Uh, which has been was quite ridiculous, but now it's incredibly easy and flexible, and it takes three properties. Uh, we don't need we don't need to set a width on the container that we want to center. We don't need to do any crazy transform hacks to get it to uh, vertically center. We can just uh, use flexbox. So we make it a flexbox container. We use align items, which does the vertical centering. So if I do that out, you can see now flexbox nature is to stretch to its uh, container. So if I say that, then it'll just shrink to as small as it can, and it'll center it. And then justify content. So instead of doing the margin zero auto and having to set a width on the container, we can just say, hey, let's just move this in the center. So we don't, it can be flexible, so that will grow if it's got more content to work with, or it will shrink if it's got less content. Uh, and the power of being able to do that is we can actually, I'll just quickly do this. You can actually put multiple elements in there and it'll handle it for you because you know, it's magic. Uh, you can also control individual positioning of items within a Flexbox container. Uh, you can do, uh, so you can make it a line top or a line bottom, so that'll stick to the top or stick to the bottom of the Flexbox container, and yeah, it's really powerful. Okay, next one. Uh, this is a common thing you might see um, uh, in a lot of uh, startup websites. They've got like a pricing table where it's got three columns and three different boxes. Uh, all of them are the same height. Uh, some has like more bullet points than the other to show that your platinum plan is better. So let's quickly look at the demo here. So we've got a, this pricing thing. So you've got basic and premium. You can see it's already uh, being responsive by nature. If I zoom out, you can see now if I 
have there, they actually sit on three columns. But if it's got less width to work with, we'll, we'll drop it down, and it'll spread it out and make it look really nice. And you'll also notice the bullet points uh, in the first one. I've got one bullet point in there, but at the bottom uh, choose plan and pricing is sticking to the bottom. And we're not doing any like uh, position absolute trickery there. We're actually using um, one really cool thing that, allow that allows you to do happen when you set flex on there. So on this item info thing, we're actually setting margin auto. So margin auto in a Flexbox container will actually work out how much margin it's got to work with and it'll push it down. So in the basic plan, uh, it's got about 50 <coughs> pixels to push down and that'll work it out. So I don't need to individually go, well, basic needs 50 pixels of margin to push it down. Uh, the other one needs 10. Uh, it just works. Uh, and then also here, I use the align items to align the pricing with the button. So there's no actual padding inside that container. So I can just say, hey, actually, every, everything in there should align uh, vertically nicely. All right. So uh, if anyone, everyone should be familiar with the Holy Grail layout. So the, if you're not familiar, so the Holy Grail layout is something that started, I think, on a list apart website about having a flexible layout that's got uh, a left column, right column, and content in the middle. But the idea is you want the content to become bef before the two columns. Uh, so you had to do some crazy tricks like negative margins and uh, lots of all these tricks and have like a, a sprite background to make sure everything appears the same height. Uh, but because Flexbox uh, will actually uh, adjust the height for us, we can have even height columns. So if the content's got a huge amount of content, the columns will be the same height and we don't have to do any crazy background stuff. Uh, and one neat thing here is that uh, with the columns, we can say uh, we want the ability for it flex shrink. So remember, flex shrink was the first property, is be able to um, shrink down to zero pixels. But what we're doing is we're setting the flex basis to at least be 12 m's wide. So uh, it won't shrink any smaller than that, and it won't grow any bigger than that. The content will just fill the, fill the space. And you notice in the layout nav, we've got this order property. If I get rid of that, the actual order in the DOM is content, uh, left column, right column. And we can use the order thing to say, hey, uh, let's pull it negative one so then it starts, um, starts at the end of the layout. So now you can have uh, stuff that's really accessible for people with screen readers. Uh, search engines can get to your content faster than worrying they have to go through your navigation. Uh, and it makes it really powerful because it's really easy. You're not actually manipulating the DOM. You're just telling the layout to go, hey, actually paint the, the uh, left-hand column there instead of um, next to the right-hand column. So you're not alone in thinking Flexbox is hard to remember. So there's a lot of properties to take in there, and they really aren't very intuitively named. Um, flex basis, flex grow, flex, grow, flex shrink. Uh, once you start to understand them, they make sense, but initially looking at them, things like justify content, align items, I can never remember which one does vertical, which one does uh, horizontal. Um, you just got to play around with it. So it's not, like, don't, don't feel scared if you're like, oh, I don't know all these properties. You know, just dig in and have a good go at it. So pro tip number two. Uh, Flexbox lends itself to small modules. I wouldn't I wouldn't use it for full layout. There's, there's other specifications, uh, like the grid layout. Um, I believe Jared's going to be talking about regions. Uh, they're, they're more made for a full page sort of layout stuff. A Flexbox is really good for small little modules, things like uh, if you're familiar with object-oriented CSS, they've got the media object, which is like something you'll see in Facebook or Twitter, where you've got the, the, uh, the user's uh, av avatar, and they've got like, their comment, comment box. Uh, it really, and the idea is that it can flex to any container. So you put it in like a big, a big middle content layer, it'll just expand out and it'll just work. If you put it in like a smaller container, it'll shrink and it'll uh, reorder itself. And you don't have to do any special uh, media query responsive stuff. Uh, I would still use floats and inline blocks where it makes sense. Or if you're in uh, evergreen browsers, perhaps a grid layout. Uh, and I wouldn't force Flexbox into somewhere because it's new and shiny. I would use it where it really shines. And I think it really shines in creating small, reusable objects uh, for you to use throughout your site. That's it. Thank you.